on Wednesday. Show us with hashtag Wednesday. Welcome to First Taste TV. Today's featured partners are the American Egg Board and the Mushroom Council. I love eggs and mushrooms. Me too. It's going to be a good one. I'm yes. excited. But first, let's check out the ICN resource of the day. The Child Nutrition Recipe Box provides child nutrition program operators with recipes to prepare healthy and delicious meals that meet meal pattern requirements. These recipes are standardized to provide crediting information for all meal pattern components and include recipes made with legumes, whole grains, and vegetables from all vegetable subgroups. Brought to you by the Institute of Child Nutrition. Melissa Marsden, how are you today? I am great today. It's a beautiful day. How are you all? We are oh, missing your face in live in studio, but mm -hmm. we are so happy and grateful for modern technology yes. that you're able to visit with us. This is going to be an excellent. Ex excellent. Did you just beat me to a food pun? I beat you. I always beat you. You should be used to that by now. right? And you sent us all these egg-tastic products <laughs> for us to try today and to share the real school recipes that we collect and use and share with you. That's what I love about representing the American egg farmers. We are mm -hmm. here to share excellent advice that we learn from your fellow districts. That's what's the best thing about our business is we share with each other the tools and resources so that everybody can feed our kids more food, easier, with higher consumption. Because we know even day and age of grab and go and minimal prep time and long holding times, we know that the kids still need and get real school food. So we are so proud to join into that. As you can see right there, we've got a couple of um, menus based on what I learned in operations, which is that you have to to bring in an item and use it three ways or three days. This is my favorite, the Cobb yeah, salad. Do you notice the Cobb salads from Cobb County? That's how they serve it. So one of the things that we liked about it is how the eggs look differently and how mm. all schools are using it. That BLT salad is as simple as can be, but it sure is popular with the kids. And the thing is, during the issues we're having, we're losing those fresh choices of the salad bar. Mm. Unfortunately, those are not going to be in our near future. So really making excellent entree salads is the key to maintaining and sending out the salads that the kids love. So instead of them assembling themselves, we have to provide more choices. Customization, that's what she's talking that about. That is what she's talking about. Super important today. Absolutely. So tell me more about some of these things which look amazingly delicious and you had someone make us food which we greatly appreciate and i don't know if you know this but marlon's favorite thing is protein and he loves eggs and i love eggs and we were talking about well will you guys be tasting things and we said absolutely because we both believe in the quality and the nutritional value of eggs in schools and eggs in life, right? Yeah. Let's just start with a couple of the other menus because we wanted to talk about what's available. So I think you have one of our grab and go menus, our latest menu. And we realized that it had to be even more grab and go for what was going on. And these are real school recipes. Not only is this um, menu on our website, but also each of these school recipes. And they, we take them from the school themselves and you can take them, use them as is, 
or modify them to fit your kids in your district. Crab and go is the way to go. <laughs> I like what you did there. You're welcome. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And even within that, we'll get into the cuts. But one of the ways to differentiate those grab and go salads is by altering the cut you use for the variety of the salad that's on. That way, kids are walking up to the salads. They know instantly that the whole egg is the cob salad or the quartered egg is the BLT or the half egg. So you can use those cuts in order to enhance the description. To make it identifiable is so that, that what, they know the difference. Is that what this is? Well, Some she, sort of egg cutting device? I think that that is designed to cut eggs. But before we do that, we're going to look at the breakfast burritos. So we've got some bags of scrambled eggs, hard boiled eggs, liquid eggs. They come in an excellent array of different ways that we can purchase eggs. So we can actually buy eggs and we can hard cook them ourselves, or they actually come in these very convenient bags, which is amazing. I keep trying to make egg just jokes. Stop. I know, stop. I'll just stop. stop. When we're looking again at expanding more meals and more ages into meals in the classroom, uh, burritos and other types of sandwiches hold their heat better. And you're putting all that goodness in a burrito, wrapping it in foil and holding it, it can hold up to institutional abuse. We don't want to abuse our food, but we know it has got to survive, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is still hot too. Mm -hmm. Even sitting on this table without any foil, so that's really great. And that's exactly what happens. We have to look at how the food holds. You know, never, never test something that you don't test it the way the child gets it, right? It's mm -hmm. gotta go through all the system. And we really like the idea of uh, breakfast sandwiches and breakfast burritos wrapped up goodness. So it can really be a breakfast for lunch. We really love to start our day off with protein packed options. Right. So let's move over here and just quickly cut some eggs because I think that that was such a strong and brilliant idea that you said about differentiating the different salads so that the kids aren't actually reading labels. They're all about imaging. Mm -hmm. So Marlon, we have a couple eggs cut in different ways. Okay. We have the hard boiled just sliced in half. I mean, what a great way to show the beautiful yolk. It's easily identifiable. So this is an egg slicer, Marlon. Okay. Can you slice this egg to make it look like that? Come uh, on, come on. Ready? Yep. And easy as that, Magic. folks. <laughs> easy as that. Amazing. So, all right, Marlon, but I didn't know, I don't know if you know this, but if you take, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna direct you and show you how Please easy do. this is, folks. If this guy can do it, anyone can do, can do it. it. So take that next hard boiled egg, okay. put it on the egg slicer. That way. Okay, and you're gonna just do this a little bit more gentle. You're gonna fold that over. I want you to very carefully uh, pick up the egg. Now oh. open this. Oh no. Oh dear. Ugh, you, did you? Can I try it again? Oh my gosh, Let's try it again. Let's this try it is again. what I'm dealing with here. All right, go ahead and do it right. again and do it right this time, okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Most of the people in the kitchen are a little more skilled than Marlon may be. Burn! Oh, what are you trying to say? Oh, yes, I What love are you it. trying to say? Because <laughs> they're right. usually showing me about this time how fast they can do it. All right, ready? And slowly. Learn from each other. Because you want to keep it together. So go ahead, slowly compress. Okay. Hold it to get hold it together on the ends. That's what I was doing. Well, not oh, right, it's apparently. Slippery. There we go. All right, All right now, now what? open the egg slicer. And now you're gonna turn the egg 90 degrees, place it back in. Now this is the tricky part, okay? All right. Let's go. Oh. You're gonna need both sides, okay? Pla and folks, that's that the fancy. way it's done. That's the that way it's was done. Slick. So Melissa, we're gonna ask you to go in and change your costume, and we are gonna continue with this excellent, exciting, egg-tastic episode. And we're back with Melissa Marsden, but Melissa, your background has changed and so is our set yeah. with something that I love. What's going on? Talk to us. Well, I'm switching hats, or in this case, maybe I'm switching face masks. <laughs> and I'm putting on another one now for the Mushroom Council. And I'm here to represent the American mushroom farmers in schools. Mm, so what are some of the uh, innovative ways schools are using mushrooms today? Well, mushrooms add such layers of flavors. Asian mm -hmm. dishes are so very popular. Mm -hmm. And we know that right now the self-serve might be a distant past. But we also know 
that the kids are not going to go away from those needing the flavors in the meats and in the dishes. There's so many ways that these powerful little mushrooms pack a punch. Great, great. So you have some pretty interesting facts about mushrooms, don't you? Well, we do. We love the fact that mushrooms are local and available in almost every state. But 60% of the mushrooms are grown in Pennsylvania. So the East Coast, we know there's plenty of mushroom lovers over there. Mm -hmm. But they are grown everywhere and eaten in just about every school in this in this different states. We have from Alabama and Tennessee to California. And we feature on our website, Real School Recipes, featuring mushrooms in schools. People think they you order button mushrooms. No, buttons are a size of a mushroom. Ah, oh, I did not know that. Fun fact. They grow in beds, and depending on when they're picked uh -huh. and how long that they're able to grow, you can see them there, the different mm -hmm. sizes that are available. Yeah. And so we use a lot of what's called medium mushrooms. And, and that's just what it is. It's a medium mushroom, and it's going to quarter so nicely. And if you see the dish of, of roasted mushrooms that are quartered. No, four. quarters. That's four. four. It's four quarters in whole? Okay. They're so easy to cut and get an even cut and an even cook when you buy the mediums. Mm -hmm. So you'll see those. They go for more. And some people might think, well, food service sounds like a good purchase. And those are all right if you're processing your own. But for most of our kitchens, we don't want to do that. So no. we like to use the, the mediums and uh, not overpay by ordering buttons. You pick them very, very young. So you, you don't get a lot of volume out of them. So they cost a lot more money. So, well, it's a funny story. I had a chef and she was doing the most terrible thing you can do to mushrooms. She was... Uh rinsing and soaking these mushrooms. Wait, and I said- I shouldn't rinse and soak mushrooms? No, you never <laughs> rinse and soak mushrooms. Why? When you're rinsing and soaking mushrooms, you're taking away all the flavor. Oh. So there is this lovely contraption. Melissa, tell all the peoples what this is. It's a mushroom brush for brushing the dirt. And Here. lightly- Can I have this one? I already own one okay. because I know the correct way to clean a mushroom and that's just to brush the dirt off because you don't want to take away any of that umami flavor. Mm. Say that 10 times fast. Umami, 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 umami. <laughs> Here, brush it. brush it. Brush it. <laughs> this is a baby Bella, right? Baby Bella? Baby Bella. Do you I know have what? a daughter named Bella. Oh, do you? I do, she's yeah. super cute. Well, they're called baby Bellas because they're big ones. They're growing up siblings are portabellas. Oh, ah. okay. You can see that they're Veil, veil is all open, yeah. and that's a mature portabella. But uh -huh. we see a lot more browns, criminis, mm. portabellas. They're all baby bellas. They're all of the brown. There's Give white. Give me all the mushrooms. <laughs> Give me all the mushrooms. A great plate coverage, as well as an upscale perception when you're mm -hmm. using brown mushrooms or fresh mushrooms in your program. So I have a quick question. Sure thing. If I wanted to use these roasted mushrooms, mm -hmm. how would I utilize them with what, we, with, with what we have here on the table? They came from a recipe from Franklin School District in uh, Indiana, and they serve oh. them as a side. They serve oven roasted in a half cup portion, and the kids love it. I serve garlic roasted mushrooms mm -hmm. and they are delicious and I love them. Mushrooms are such a great way to add flavor to a dish. And we have a dish that we're gonna add some flavor to, right, Melissa? That's right. When we add it to ramen bowls or we add it to other stir fries, even an eighth of a cup is enough to really pop mm -hmm. the flavors, especially mm -hmm. if we're looking at a low sodium dish or right. we're looking at a vegetarian base. Right. And I'll give you a tip or a trick. If you're looking to slice up a bunch of mushrooms, outsource it. Buy them pre-sliced from <laughs> your distributor. And not only do you have the ones there that you see that are the normal Smart. thick sliced mushrooms that are about seven slices per quarter cup, but you can buy what's called a thin sliced mushroom in a bucket. All right, and it's become my favorite mushroom to cook with. It's a perfect product, an incredible yield, uh, reasonable food cost, and a great addition to so many 
meals today. And remember, so many are family farmers. And like many of our mm-hmm. family farmers, we need to support American farmers. Absolutely. Yeah. That bears repeating. We are supporting American farmers. And I agree that is so very important because without farmers, we don't have food. So a huge shout out to all our farmers out there. Thank you for all that you do for all of us in helping us feed hungry kids. And remember, mushrooms are fresh year round mm-hmm. because they're growing inside. You're looking for a harvest of the month or fresh vegetables where there might not be others. You can mm-hmm. always rely on mushrooms to fill in the blanks. When you talk about sustainable, mushrooms are so sustainable. Mm-hmm. From recycling the bedding that's used to recycling at sure. the end, everything in between is very low profile with a high density growth. But they grow in my lawn in New Hampshire, so. But, but don't eat those. Don't eat those. Don't eat and those. I think that's an important thing to educate our kids too. We don't want them eating those <laughs> mushrooms. We want them eating them in school or from uh, the store, but uh, not from the lawn. Mm-hmm. Um, and just real quickly, Melissa, you have some beautiful things. You have some raw mushrooms here. And all we've done with these raw mushrooms, we just, we've just put some dressing on those, right? And kept those mushrooms delicious. Absolutely. Any any type of dressing from Italian to Asian flavors can all work with mushrooms. You can do a mixed vegetable salad. But when mm-hmm. you're adding, you want to add some marinated be- uh, mushrooms to an Italian club salad. What a nice yeah. way to kick up the flavors and yet not sog out on it because they're going to help. At the same time, they absorb all that extra moisture. So remember, they'll absorb any flavor you give them. Right, they will absorb. And over here, they've absorbed some EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. I had no idea what that meant. Uh, You're welcome. (laughs) And we have just dusted these with salt and pepper. So here you see the raw quartered, and then they shrink a skosh, and they're delicious. We may have eaten a couple before we said action. Sorry, folks, (laughs) but they were just too good to resist. Melissa, so easy to do. What a great idea. And it just shows the versatility of the mushroom. Standalone or as a customized upgrade, mushrooms are a great healthy addition to school menus. And one that kids really appreciate when Mm. they're offered. I really think that the gatekeepers here think the kids aren't eating mushrooms and they're eating them everywhere. American made, American farmers, American mushrooms. That's right. Amazing, amazing. What incredible information. Mm -hmm. We love mushrooms. You love mushrooms. We all love mushrooms. Everybody should love mushrooms. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing with us today. Thank you so much for having me and have a great day. Well, I learned so much about mushrooms and eggs. That was awesome. I know, so much. So if you'd like to learn more, please go to First Taste TV. You can click on either one of these episodes and learn all there is to know about these two incredible American-made products. Yep, and find us next time on First Taste TV. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. I'm Sharon and this is Chef Check. Today we're looking at some classic menu items for K-12, but how could we swap them out with something that's a little bit different? Nachos are very popular on the menu right now and so are tachos. We're very familiar with that item. It got me thinking, why couldn't we take the same tater tots and do breakfast nachos? This is Chef Check on First Taste TV. Chefs have incorporated mushrooms into their menus for years, and for good reason. Mushrooms are not only flavorful and versatile, they're also nutritional powerhouses with immune-boosting vitamin D and selenium. They're cost-effective and often locally grown, a plus for school meals. Visit mushroomsinschool.com to explore our delicious mushroom recipes, watch our culinary training video, and download our food literacy lessons. Perfect for introducing mushrooms to students. You'll love how easy it is to put mushrooms on the menu.